Call Mr. Raymond McCann. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me deal first with the nonsense that was talked earlier today in this chamber about people on the left who had advised a, uh, a vote to leave. That such people must be in alignment that have been supporting Boris Johnson, Nigel Farage, and the rest of that crew across the water. It's absolutely untrue. People before profit is quite able to articulate its own particular position, which is different from that of uh, a Boris Johnson, and which is also different from that of the leadership of the, uh, Remain, the Remain side. A, I was active some years ago in the referendum in the South. Yes, I will. The member for giving way has said that he can articulate a position that is different to Boris Johnson. Can he deliver it? I will articulate it now and explain how we propose to deliver it. And if you had waited a few minutes, you wouldn't have had to jump to your feet and ask the question. <laughs> I fully intended to do that. Yes, I will. It's an obvious question, and it's in my mind too. The, me they don't the, member, to me to do the it. member has an extra minute. Sorry. The member has an extra oh, thank minute. Thank you very much. Great. That's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, first, people before profit is always rejected. Now I've always rejected the European Union. We reject it now because we reject the rottenness, the rottenness that the EU uh, uh, represents. If you want to know the true nature of the uh, EU, look back a year. Just look, uh, look back a year. We've heard an awful lot about the fact that leaving the EU will threaten sort of spending on community projects, will destroy jobs, uh, will uh, uh, destroy wages, and all the rest of it, infrastructure. Will it indeed? Will it indeed? Well, if you're worried about that in referenda, look back to what the EU did to Greece when the Greek people in a referendum voted to reject the austerity policies of the European Union. What? Yes, indeed. Does the member acknowledge that the people of Greece, with respect to the governance in Greece, made very poor domestic decisions? And does the member acknowledge that the ratepayers and the taxpayers across Europe uh, had entitlement to not keep paying the allowed money? Well, so much for the, uh, the uh, lady's commitment to democracy. Do I agree that the Greek people had voted in a stupid way? That's what she's asking. It doesn't matter. That's the way she voted. That's the way the people of the cradle of democracy voted. That was the impl clear implication of your question. Of course, of course it was. They rejected it. The EU rejected that referendum result precisely because they wanted to impose austerity, that they wanted the Greek government to cut social spending, that they wanted uh, a funding withdrawn from all sorts of communities and progressives, no thanks, uh, uh, a, a, a groups. In other words, they wanted to do all the things which some people in this House are now claiming which sort of would be, uh, uh, we couldn't do if we left the EU. Their argument, you know, they should consider the words of Walter Scott. You know, oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. And they were deceiving. Now, so were the, uh, uh, the Remain camp and the Out camp across the border. So, sorry, yes, go ahead. The, the member says, suggests to us that the, the European Union was a, a tangle and a web to deceive. Was it deceiving when it gave women rights? Was it, de was it deceiving whenever it gave us environmental rights? Was it deceiving when it gave us employment rights? Was it deceiving whenever it saved refugees? No, it did not. Save refugees. So start at the end, Mr. Speaker. The EU saving refugees, they have erected barbed wire barricades around Fortress Europe. Somebody referred to Fortress UK and immigrants. The main fortress being erected in Europe is in the European Union. Not only do we have barbed wire fences around the edges of it, we have barbed wire fences to stop the movement of people who don't qualify within it, around the borders of Hungary, around in, in, in Serbia, in Slovenia. You see barbed wire fences within. This is not an organization which is pulling people together in a benign way. It is dividing people. It is racist. Driving the, the agreement made between the EU and Turkey. So you take one back and we send one over. That treating human beings like commodities to be swapped in a barter market. What a disgusting and disgraceful thing to do. Why is it that not a mention of that has been made? And people here talk about the EU and give the impression that it's a benign organisation which has got the interests of ordinary people in this country or anywhere else at heart. They're out talking, rightly so, rightly so, about the need to go to Dublin and talk to the Dublin government. Anybody remember what happened in the south of Ireland when the EU disapproved? You know, a European Commission disapproved of what the elected Irish government was doing. They were told by the European Commission, do what you're told, or the quote was, a bomb will go off in Dublin. That's what they were told. Not an explosive device, presumably, but a financial and economic bomb uh, uh, threatened them. Now so many people in Dublin are praising the EU. They're suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. You know, there were times over the last few days watching the football 
and I thought I was transferring my allegiance from one day to another from the occupied six counties to the occupied 26 counties. A hundred years after 1916, national independence, how are you? The European uh, Union won't stand for national independence in any sense at all. This is an oppressive. They, they, who are they answerable to? They're certainly not answerable. Who are the, the Commission answerable to? Does anybody here know? Who are the European Commission? I'll tell you who they're answerable to. They're answerable to the bankers, and that's in whose interest they have operated throughout the period of austerity. They're, they're uh, uh, answerable to the more belligerent sections of the European bourgeoisie. They are not answerable to anybody else. Nobody elected them. Of course, you know the British Commissioner resigned on Friday. Anybody know who he was? Anybody know? Lord Hill. Lord Hill was the man. How many people are aware of Lord Hill? I ask the member, I ask the member to conclude his remarks. Sorry? Conclude your remarks. Yes, you did give me that extra minute, you know. Uh, uh, what I say is this. I'll end, I'll end with this on the question sort of Scotland and uh, a Northern Ireland. Call Mr Jim Allister. Uh, a, Mr Allister. Okay, I'll leave it, but I have more to say in some other place. Mr. Lot more to say. Mr Allister has up to four minutes, including interventions. What a broad and appealing church the Leave campaign was. Mr. Speaker, 